Don't tell me what to do. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not the boss of me. I can make my own decisions. Go meddle in someone else's Leave business. Leave me alone. You should talk. You're just as guilty as I am. You don't understand. You're so judgmental. Don't you know what the Bible says? Don't judge or you will be judged. Jesus didn't judge people. God said not to judge. Quit, Quit judging, judging me. Hi, my name is Tyson. And over the last four or five years, I found it very interesting what Christians say about judging. I always thought it kind of suspicious when they would say things like, Don't judge. The Bible says not to judge. You know, Tyson, you shouldn't judge people. Tyson, that's a pretty harsh judgment. And it always kind of just urged me in the fact of, I understand that we need to be careful, but how do I vote for president? How do I be a human being if I can't judge situations and judge people's actions and, and how do I do this as a Christian and, and so I started becoming a little uh, lopsided in my beliefs and finally I said one day I need to figure out what the Bible says about judging. Not about what people say, not about even what Christians say, what does the Bible say? So I opened up to Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 which is the verse they always use to say see you shouldn't judge. So I wanted to dig into this and see what it really said, see what Jesus said. And here Jesus says, Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured back to you. Now this was very interesting to me because, well, I've read this before, but it finally hit me that this wasn't a commandment to judge. I mean, if you read the first three words, do not judge, you think that, but if you actually read what Jesus said, it's not a commandment not to judge. It's a warning about judgment. You know, warning, be very careful how you judge. Uh, because there will be consequences if you make harsh judgments on people, if you just jump to conclusions. And um, so I was, I was very interested in it. So I, obviously I just kept reading, which is what you need to do in the Bible when, when something's not finished. You need to keep reading. And uh, so I turned to verse 3, and I was surprised to see the passage that I knew very well. I've heard this many times. I wasn't raised in the church, but I've been in the church long enough to know this passage. And it says, Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your own brother's eye. Wow, this really... Um, hit it home for me and the fact that you know we need to watch out for our brothers and I'm talking about uh, Christians in general I need to watch out for my brothers and sisters in Christ I need to watch out for those logs in their eyes meaning those things that are faltering and those things that are keeping them in sin all kinds of things like that I need to watch out for them but I need to make sure that if I go rebuke them or if I go talk to them about it you know that I'm not doing the same thing that I'm not falling down the same road and trying to go up and say, hey, quit doing that, even though myself I would be doing it. But that wouldn't make any sense to people. Uh, you know, Jesus says, don't be a hypocrite. But I still wanted a little more scripture to, to help me understand this. And, and I found in John chapter 7, verse 24, Jesus says, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. I found that very interesting because he uses righteous judgment. Do not judge by appearance. Um, a, a righteous person, I believe, a righteous man or woman, is going to humble themselves before God and before his brothers and sisters in Christ. That they aren't just going to jump to conclusions. They are going to see the situation and say, you know, am I faltering in that area? They're not going to think of themselves as better. And I think this great, Jesus said, righteous judgment. We need to judge with righteous judgment, not that we're better than them. But so we can make the right judgment. I just thought this was amazing. But I still wondered, well, how am I supposed to judge a non-believer, someone that isn't a Christian? Am I supposed to uh, beat them over the head with the Bible? Am I supposed to prove to them that they need to be following the Ten Commandments and uh, all kinds of things, and, and I understood the Christian way. I, I, need to, I need to watch up on brothers and sisters in Christ, but how do I judge the lost, the people that don't, don't believe in Jesus Christ, which we've all been there. Whether you're a Christian or not, we've all been unbelievers, so well, I wondered this. And I came across 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 
verse 12 through 13. And the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest apostles of the Bible, said this. He wrote this to a Christian church, to a Christian audience. It says, What have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church? But those who are outside, God judges. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves. This was very clear to me, that as Christians, I don't need to be worrying about judging how good non-believers are living. I don't need to be worrying about, well, they need to be following the Ten Commandments. I need to make sure to post Ten Commandments everywhere I go. I need to make sure that they're following us. Because if they're not, then I'm not doing my good judging. And, uh, you know, the problem is, is even if I get all my Islamic, my Jewish, uh, all, all my friends, my, my non-believer friends, even if I get all of them to follow the Ten Commandments, the Bible is very clear that they're still going to hell. That you cannot go to heaven by good works. You know, and the Bible just made this passage so clear to me through reading the scriptures that even someone that follows, follows all these good things is still judged by God. And it says it right here, that God will judge them. It makes me realize how important it is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them, to share the love. But they know that they don't have to go through that judgment. But they can accept Christ. And it was nice to see that this this scripture complemented the other scriptures. And the fact that Paul was very descriptive here, remove the wicked man from among you. You need to make that judgment. As Christians, we need to judge ourselves. We need to judge the church. We need to make sure that good Christian doctrines are in the church, that we're teaching the right things. And when people come up and they just don't know any better and they just start teaching weird things, that we need to go up to them in love and say, look, sister or brother in Christ, that's not what the Bible says. We need to do what the righteous says. And Paul says this in First Corinthians, that with all the gifts we have, with all the things we have, if we can't love people, if we can't do it in a loving way, then how beautiful the gospel is. And it will set you free. I hope today when you listen to this that you learn something, uh, whether you're a Christian or you're not. Uh, I hope you realize that the Bible can set you free. God bless you.